Uh, I'm Ryan, the CEO and founder of Influential, the largest influential company by revenue in the space. I'm with my friend, Shahar Scott, VP of Better Reality Labs. Um, and we're here to talk about a number of fun things. Uh, I, I will say, please, no matter what's in the end, not only have Mark Cuban coming up, but we're going to end this with a Gen Z tutorial uh, on how to uh, talk to your kids. So, who wants to make it cool? Um, so, we'll start off with uh, the background. So, beyond just the great work you're doing at Meta, how did you get to where you are today? What's the journey? Because you are built for AR, you are built for social. So, give us the background. How did you get here? Um, a lot of luck, no. Um, I've spent the last two decades working at the intersection of marketing and technology and grew up, uh, you know, before the app store existed and digital and was kind of always at the right place at the right time and helped brands connect with their consumer in new and innovative ways and I really love how marketing has just been transformed because of technology. We don't have a playbook, we're constantly adapting to new platforms and new ways to reach people in um, fun and engaging ways. And so I just feel very lucky, honestly, to have been at Apple and Snap, Bumble, and now at Meta. For the journey, and now you have, uh, you might have more than this, we have two significant products that are very different. Uh, I don't know what you guys, but I'm a game, I'm, I'm all on social media. So we've got the Quest 3, which is very different than the Great Band Meta Classics. So the term Meta Classics. Yes. Um, so how do you think about bifurcating with different audiences, you go to the platforms, what's, what, what's super set for these? Yeah, so for those that don't know, so our MetaQuest headset um, is a VR headset. We have both Quest 2, Quest 3, and Quest Pro. So depending on how much of a core gamer you are, or the use cases that you're buying it for, for fitness, or just entertainment, um, and we have all different price points. We sell them directly, and then we also have obviously great partners in retail, big boxes. And what we see is like teens and young adults use them after school, um, on the weekends, during their holidays and breaks. And so gaming is a core focus for us, and we launch partnerships with the NBA and brought 52 games to the court side so you can sit in the comfort of your own home and really feel like you're sitting court side playing with your favorite teams and players. Um, we have a partnership with Roblox. We launched RAP um, this year during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And so, um, again, just very much a core gamer audience with people that really enjoy spending time being fully immersed. And we also launched with Quest 3 Mixed Reality, which allows you to actually have pass through experiences. So, not just be fully immersed, but you're playing a game and it ricochets off your own fridge, or you see your husband walk in the door for your kids coming home and you're still being able to engage with the content without being like fully absent. Um, so that's our um, line of Quest headsets and if you haven't right. demoed it, are you, you should. Are you the coolest mom in the block? I mean, I, I, I yes, sure, I but that's my kids, but yes, I mean, I do, they, they, they have been exposed to it from a very early age, so they're my biggest demo and, uh, they are even consultants for our team. They come in and do some market research for us often. All right, so uh, how old are your kids? I have twins that are almost 12. So are they also then rocking the great things? Yeah, although, so you have a pair here, which I'll show later, but um, we have a great partnership with Luxottica and launched Ray Van Meta Smart Glasses this last quarter. And they are an incredible, very iconic, stylish form factor. You can guess, you found them in the audience, put them on. Um, Brian here has a clear to wear them inside. They also have transition, but they allow you to capture content, allow you to take phone calls, um, talk to your friends, listen to podcasts. And yes, and using AI technology, you can also ask it questions. You can get turn by turn directions, take pictures. Take pictures. Yeah, it's, and you look amazing. I love it. Well, we'll do a Q&A later and I'll have it on so I can watch all of you. Go watch yourselves answering questions. Um, all right, so let's talk about how you are bringing these amazing products to different consumers in market. So um, Black Friday, every Monday, you did, or in Vegas, you did a sphere activation. Talk about it, I'm gonna put it on the screen. That's gonna actually, I talk about it first and I'll the video. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So, um, you know, our, one of our biggest barriers is obviously getting people in headset and really showing them 
how immersive the experience can be. And once you put it on, you totally get it. So we are constantly looking for 3D immersive ways to showcase the content experiences on the platform. And when Sphere launched, we, we were um, really excited to try it um, and, and really put the experience directly to the consumer. So we had a great um, couple of them, actually, if you want to play it now. So we had um, a game that we launched with Ghostbusters and we even had like Stranger Things. So um, you really feel like the game comes to life and you really can start to see Hopefully we play this out. Oh. Uh -oh. Well, it was really great. You actually see it. Um, but. What a filibuster. What am I saying? I know. So, you know, it really, obviously, it's a very unique, immersive medium. We also did um, billboards where we had the 3D out of home where you felt like you were walking through the billboard and engaging with the content. So, you know, being an immersive headset, you kind of can only do it if you're in the immersive headset. So, Strongly encourage you to demo it, um, but this was another way for us to do it. So, to your question of like, where do you find consumers? We go to where they are, and we try to eliminate the barriers to reaching them, and really helping them understand the power of VR. You guys want to play it? Well, I guess. In the meantime, so do this. Uh, what kind of IP uh, are you guys uh, jumping into for custom made? All the custom made games. That yeah, so we have both first party and third party, and um, we are honestly like still pretty early in the roadmap, but it's a huge focus for us and bringing really incredible experiences to the headset things that we know people are going to engage with and spend a lot of time in every single day. So fitness is another core area for us. We have a great um, game with Supernatural where you can actually just be entertained while you work out. Meat Saver is another um, first party now. We acquire in that studio. So we do both first party and third party, obviously, Stranger Things and Star IP on Ray Netflix. Um, both customers, again, is with Sony, but we do a lot to really offer people variety and create reasons for them to come back every single day. So the goal is to just to buy the headset, leave it on the shelf, is to use it every single day. Do you just want to buy a Quest 3 headset now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one of the things I found most interesting is obviously meta, if you can back out of this, but you are agnostic. You're across every social platform to wherever the consumer is. Talk about the strategy, talk about where you've been and what you want to know. Yeah, so one of the things that our team does, I think, exceptionally well is we look at how consumers are using our products. And so what we saw with Quest 3, because again, it has that pass-through capacity where you can actually see your living room, not just be fully immersed. Um, we saw that people were doing their household chores, washing dishes, doing things safely, but wearing a Quest 3 headset, also having YouTube up or playing a game. And that was happening on social platforms. And we were like, holy shit, like this is actually how people are using it. And so, sure, we didn't plan for it to be a better way to do household chores, but we thought that was happening on our social platforms, obviously, 
Instagram, Facebook, but also happening on TikTok, it was also happening on X, it was happening um, on Reddit. And so we tap into that and we really just take advantage and amplify what, how we're using it and then bring it to um, more consumers. So we cross post things all the time, but we also create things for each platform and the behaviors obviously on TikTok are very different than Instagram. Um, and so we really try to lean into how consumers are engaging. And um, similarly for Rayman Meta, um, we, we launched with a lot of creators because obviously that's what you're doing is you're creating content, you're sharing content, you're um, being able to be more present with your friends and family by using the smart glasses. And um, there was an incredible creator on TikTok that uh, got a pair and started uh, creating her own content with a very famous song by Jack Black, and it went viral. And so for five weeks, it went viral on TikTok, it went viral on Instagram. This is the stuff that you can't plan for as marketers. Um, it's lightning in a bottle when it happens, and you got to capture it. So we continue to amplify and invest in um, creators that were doing it, but we we definitely go to where the consumers are, and we have the uh, privilege of working with Instagram and Facebook and WhatsApp. But we also go to where consumers are, which they're using all the social platforms. So obviously, creator economy is where I have the focus. Um, how do you approach creators? Are you doing the prescriptive, please do this? You guys saying your choice, your voice, you just don't do anything, listen, take this and go for it. How do you guys think about it? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, so certainly there are um, recommended use cases. We always do demos so that people really understand how to use the technology. It's very user. Um, friendly and very intuitive, but we do give them a certain um, kind of examples and proxies, and then we just see what they create with it. So, um, for example, with a rate kind of smart glasses, we knew that um, athletes are going to be a great use case, but only if you're not wearing a helmet, right? Because it's not as comfortable to wear. Um, and so, for at the NFL, it wasn't going to work, but um, for skateboarding, it's a great use case. So we found creators that fit the product um, use case well, and then saw what else they did. So with Coco Graph, like, it was like, yeah, of course, you just won um, the US Open, but she also has a downtime. What does she like to do with her time when she's not playing tennis off the court and just listening to music, talking to her friends, capturing content? So it, it was really about like seeing what else they do, not just what they're known for or what they usually create content for, and really like leaning into that. So um, we have different and tender use cases that we know are common. So chefs, great use case, because your hands free, you're creating content. Um, unboxing, you no longer need a rig and a camera and a light. And a camera, like you just have to open the box um, and really tell the consumers what you're receiving, opening, and um, and it's very seamless. So we had a lot of different use cases, and then we were just blown away by what the community created on their own. So we're going to try to find another video, so we can get that up and see what works. Fingers sure. crossed. Hopefully, we'll be a TikTok video. Hey, you know, we're on the one game on the tour. So when you're ready, and if you let me, I want to see it in motion, in breathing. You won't be ready. So, give me some, like, that, that one was 10 million plus likes, I'm not sure how many Yeah, 10 million views, and then it kickstarted, we had over 300 million um, different videos that were created on the back of that. I mean, it was not, it was not, it was five weeks long, it wasn't just one day, but camera glasses was trending on TikTok for five straight weeks. So, let's talk about measurement. So, are you thinking about this from purely, obviously, you built a trend, which is fantastic, that's the whole thing the brand. Is it more top of funnel, middle of funnel? You just want uh, awareness? Are you trying to get people to actually convert through TikTok or Meta or the platforms? What do you think about that? Yeah, so all, all of the above. Um, a lot of the technologies that we're launching are new categories. They don't exist. People don't wake up every single day saying, which, which VR headset am I going to buy today? Um, so we do have to create a lot of awareness, and we're building categories. And there's no marketing flywheel without thinking about things full funnel. So, um, Obviously, with Ray Van Meadow, we needed to create awareness of the new product. We had previous versions, but it was very different 
use case technology. Same thing with Quest 3, even though they had Quest 2 before that. Very different experience and use case of using MR versus VR. So we're constantly creating awareness and then moving people through that funnel and really making sure that as they're considering which one to buy, um, that we are, you know, they're number one choice. So we always talk influential about bringing up the speed of culture, trend spotting. So you actually really are on trend, so you guys are ahead of here. Um, how do you think about jumping into you know, Zeitgeist moment? So we have all things, Super Bowl's coming out, we've got so there's IP stuff, there is just winter, spring moments. Um, how, how do you guys think about being a part of culture now that we've absolutely seen the platform? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and even just to tie it back to the measurement piece, like it is about outcomes, it's not just about doing a bunch of things and hoping they work and making sure that as people are considering the product and they're actually buying it, that they're using it every single day. So how can we continue to create experiences and software updates that really encourage them to continue going back to use it every single day? Um, and, and obviously for us, because we are so focused on how consumers are using it every single day, um, it is important when we show up where they are um, engaging across music, culture, fashion, and sports certainly is a huge focus for us. So we do show up in a lot of those cultural moments, and then we also like to create our own. So for Quest, we have our gaming showcase where we always launch our new scene of shows. So we also create our own and really tap into the core gamer community. We also did a lot of stuff with, on Twitch, and we allow people to play rap first and really show what it was like to play it before it even um, launched on the headset. So. It is really fashionably showing up where people are. You know, I, I often say we have 10 Super Bowls happening every single day on Instagram. So like, yes, we do stuff at the Super Bowl, but we also do stuff on our own platforms every single day where we have millions, hundreds of millions, billions of people engaging every single day. You guys are a great job. And I always want to give uh, a level set for marketers. There are three types of trends. There are moments, there are signals, and there are forces. To kind of easily put into boxes like a moment's one to three days, a signal's one to three weeks, uh, and a force is one to three months. Depending on how you want to either be a part of a larger zeitgeist, maybe it's more of a, a force versus maybe kind of capture of lighting in the bottle, which you have to make yourselves if you guys, or if you're doing something where you want to drop into like maybe Gen Z terms that are happening you know, in the moment. And it's kind of it's a good segue into what I, I'm excited to talk to you guys about, which is uh, the Gen Z terminology and how to use it in marketing. Uh, we'll go through this in a second. Um, the first one, I want to talk about grids, because she got the grids over here. Um, we have one of, one of our clients, uh, Campbell's, we have a great case study with them, talking about how they were able to, to tap into culture in a, in a very important moment in time. And really, the word of the year, according to Oxford Dictionary and New York Times, uh, was uh, happening back in February. And what we see in technology through platform and API integrations is that these words or things that are happening are outperforming on the native side. Meaning view counts on TikTok or Meta, or you're seeing better engagements on these content pieces. And as long as it's one, there's no IP attached to it that would cause an issue as a paperwork, or there's no salacious nature of what these words mean, you want to potentially include it if it's the right fit for your brand. Uh, for this one, we used chefs, you know, like chefs. Chefs were putting some uh, salt bay riz on their Campbell's soup for their loved ones. And we saw that you throw not only did they see in the regular native content, but the sponsor content also performed through 4x above baseline. We also saw a tremendous amount of return on ad spend through an offline lift study through Stracana, IRI, one of the different platforms to measure offline sales. So being in that the speed of culture is driving real world outcomes beyond just awareness and uh, you know, middle of the so we're going to have a fun game. We've got about five minutes left. Perfect. Um, so we're going to do by by hand raising. You're going to tell us if you know what these words mean. Now, please be honest. because I'm going to call on one of you uh, to answer this. So please, if you don't know it, don't raise your hand. If you do know it, 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 it all right. So we don't know what it is. For those that are aware, it's charisma. You already know that one. No one knows the word, but the word of the year. Um, the, my, one of my favorite is uh, who here knows what no cap means. I mean, you were, you were, uh, yeah, yeah, what's that, what is it? So he said it's no lie, it's, it's truth. Now, for those that aren't aware of this word, the way I think about it, I'm sorry, I'm a four-year-old I think of like fiction and non-fiction. Cap is fiction, 
We know what happens in nonfiction, so hopefully it helps you remind you that that's true versus false. So, no cap. Um, all right, geez, all right, this one is my favorite. Uh, shish! Who here is aware of what shish means? Uh, you've got to check with it. I feel like being impressed by Wow, jeez. Family, wow. Well done. <laughs> well, well, well done. And for some reason, I should know the culture, but you should also be putting a syringe into your arm when you do it. I don't get it. <laughs> You should be given out right into the car glass to winter. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's all. All right. Situationship. I don't know which I wish you got. I think it's like uh, when you're with someone but you don't really know what the situation is. You're not in a relationship, but not in a situation. It's a smart crowd here. So, in a way, I would apply to it as a from the Facebook generation. It's the it's complicated option. <laughs> Undefined romantic relationship. This one's actually newer to me. Uh, who knows what Delulu means? Back or side? Delusional. You are, it is short for delusional. Don't be called Delulu, it's not a good thing. <laughs> and the last one is who knows what sus is? Yes, yeah. yeah, so if you're sus, you are suspicious or suspect, suspicious minds, Elvis, Vegas, it's all full circle. <laughs> Alright guys, well I know we don't have to go time, we good? We got four minutes more. Who was other Gen Z terms want to talk about? <laughs> Alright, so I'm 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 recording right now. So when I get this, I just have to put the product for a second. So when I'm recording this, I want to upload it to I assume by the platform job. Otherwise, how does how does it work? So there's an app like a correspondence with this platform that syncs up to your phone. So all the content first of all just goes there and then you decide what to do with it. You're not gonna share it piece of content. Um, you can also use um, commands, so hey meta, send this to Chris, and then it'll load in through WhatsApp. Um, or you can just keep it in your camera roll and just like reference it. So there's a bunch of cameras on there, the audio, there's five speakers, so great for taking calls or podcasts, but you decide what the, where the content goes and where it doesn't. So. Also, what do I do with my <laughs> Hands free. Uh, yeah. So, uh, give me some examples when you use it in your life. You, 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 yeah, so yeah. I do it, I, I use it for calls all the time. It's, it's the, I mean, I, everyone has their pods, but it, there's no silencing, so you can still like hear what's happening around you. I mean, even now you could have the soundtrack to this conversation, and I could hear this, only you would hear the music. So, um, it's a great way for music, podcasts. Um, and then we have a dog, my kids' sport. Um, it's an opportunity for me to catch content without having my phone interfere with what my kids are doing and what I'm seeing. So, at their concert or recital, the way for me to stealthfully take photos um, and videos and share them with my parents afterwards without having to be like that mom, you know, that's blocking everyone's view. So, why why the partnership with Fox 5? Why Ray Ban? Why not hear the homes around Ray Ban? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, Ray Ban, they're pros, right? They have the majority of the market share are on, on not only sunglasses, but on the glasses, period. They have 80 different brands, so it's a stylish, iconic frame. You look amazing in them. Wayne Bearer, we've got also the headliner, so it's just an opportunity to really merge technology and make it visible, make it just an enhanced glass that you would wear anyways. Like, you would buy it, it's $50 more to have all these incredible features unlocked. So, why not? Uh, so the last remaining minute, there's two minutes left. Um, is there anything that you're allowed to talk about that's upcoming that is going to be something happening in the culture? Great question. So um, we do we do share you know a lot of what's happening on our roadmaps, and um, we believe in democratizing all the technology, making it as accessible as possible. So one of the things that we're um, that we announced recently that classes will do in the next few weeks is multimodal functionality, so you'll be able to actually um, look at a menu in Japanese and be able to translate it back to you in English. Um, you'll be able to um, like do turn-by-turn -turn directions. You'll be able to be jogging or running and looking at a mountain and say, hey, Meta, what am I looking at? And it'll recognize the mountain location and tell you what it is. So it'll just get smarter and better, more intuitive. 
and hopefully just be something that we all use just every single day. We'll have more glasses. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Thanks so much, guys.